Welcome to today's Eat Talk. Today we're joined by Martin Arutia, the head of global innovation at LIGO Group, and Jason Yim, the CEO of Trigger, in a discussion on transforming the store into an experience with WebAR. Why don't we talk about, um, you know, as a mixed reality agency, uh, what kind of clients does Trigger typically work with uh, and what are the main reasons that they're, those clients are looking to use augmented reality? Yeah, I mean, um, we, we service like a broad spectrum of clients. I think they fall into some kind of clear buckets for, for us. One is entertainment. Uh, we do AR for the Star Wars, Spider-Man, Toy Story franchises, uh, for instance. Uh, sports is big for us as well. Uh, so the NBA, PGA Tour, NHL, uh, and several NFL teams as well. Um, and then, of course, with Lego, just uh, e-commerce in general. Um, so other brands might include Adidas, Pepsi, Nestle, General Mills. Um, and then finally, uh, Enterprise uh, is, is big for us. Um, we work a lot on the auto industry side, uh, but also with a lot of telcos, especially with all the 5G uh, enablement coming out. Uh, so kind of dedicated 5G content um, kind of provided through the telcos. Um, and then why, why we use AR, uh, we kind of drank the Kool-Aid, you know, a long time ago. Um, but we really think that uh, there's so many uh, uh, benefits from engagement to, um, uh, to conversion, uh, to retention. Um, but we see our clients coming and asking for kind of a spectrum from basically marketing to the Snapchat generation, which is the, the kind of simplest type of AR that we do, to all the way to the more complex side, which is like full kind of product innovation, like, you know, uh, user experience innovation uh, that's pushing the limits of, of, of AR, similar to what uh, Martin is doing with the, with the hidden side Lego sets, um, where you're actually uh, playing with the toy and changing the user experience and the play experience completely. Awesome. And then um, I guess why web-based AR in particular? Yeah, so, you know, we started on webcam-based AR. We, we've been doing, you know, um, uh, app-based AR for a very long time. And, and one thing that we learned quickly was no matter how amazing that experience was that you created, the, one of the biggest blockers and the most area of friction was just getting the user to download the app in the first place. Uh, and this is especially in, in terms of something where you, where you need the AR experience to be immediate. Like let's say in a, in retail store situation where someone is, you know, uh, interested about your product, they see some signage that, that you want to launch AR off of, but if you have, to, if they at that point have to download an app, it's almost guaranteed that they will not do that. So, um, we waited a very long time and it was amazing when eighth wall came out and, and launched their product and it, it solved all those problems for us. So right now, with a flaw, what happens is as soon as that person is interested, you can they can launch their in, immediately into a, a AR experience just from a simple QR code and their phone and, and, and a browser. So, excellent. Um, and Martin at, at Lego, you know Lego's had a number of AR experiences um, under its brand now. So why is Lego so committed to AR? Yeah, and, and, Yes, I think that's a good word to put it. Community. It's, an, it's a technology that is super interesting for us because it allows us to, to go beyond on the storytelling and to the fantasy, right? Of course, you know, we, 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 we stimulate a lot of the imagination when you're building, but these will be props and cues to, to, to foster and, and boost that imagination beyond what you're already thinking. So just to see ghosts around you, just to maybe see how, you know, the spaceships move around and there is a couple of you know, fires here and there, or a fire truck coming from the corner, it definitely stimulates your, your, your imagination and that's a little bit of fun, especially for us. Also, the sound that we're able to add to AR, it allows us to then make a complete, you know, um, exciting stage where everything is moving and, 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 and making you, you know, really get into that fantasy world. Great. Um... You know, and in, in launching that in-store AR experience with Hidden Side, uh, what were some of your goals um, and objectives? And then how did uh, the Web AR Hidden Side experience deliver on these marketing goals? Yes, uh, that was probably one of the only ways that we could deliver what we wanted to do, that it was telling the story behind Hidden Side, 
we of course look into different ways. Should we have a video? Should we have you know printed materials? And I think all of that complements it very well. So AR was not here to replace; it was actually to elevate the marketing toolkit that we already had developed. And um, Web AR, of course, uh, allows to go to that storytelling that we wanted to say how those ghosts look like, how many colors of ghosts we have, but also it allows us to really get you into this role play mode inside the store. And we definitely um, wanted to make the shopping experience something extremely cool. And we believe through AR, you know, Web AR, we, we managed to do that, right? I mean, you could see people, you know, trying to hunt uh, the, the, the ghosts around them, trapping the different colors. And something else that it was um, important for us is to go beyond the opening hours because, of course, this experience was happening when we were open, you know, in, in normal working hours. But we actually placed a QR code on the glass door of the store. So even, you know, if we were closed or you were passing after hours or on a late Sunday, you still uh, were able to get that experience, right? I mean, even if you were just passing by and the store was closed, you managed to get the same experience as you were inside that actually work a little bit to, um, to capture the interest from everyone to come back. And the other part is uh, that also this allows us to go truly on the channel. One of the ambitions that we had as a team is that we, we wanted to offer the same um, experience in the physical store when you were shopping online. This is uh, probably one of the first times that we ever seen this and we're super proud to, to, to do that together, you know, with you at Wall and with, of course, with Trigger is that we, we managed to also uh, offer the same experience at home. So again, doesn't matter if you are shopping in a store, if you are um, if you are at, um, at your own desk, you will still see the same goals and you get the same messages and the same storytelling. So that was definitely an advantage. And of course, there is a lot of operational things that were uh, very, very well solved through this because we didn't, we didn't have to put screens and allow people to go that. Everybody had their own screen already with them. So that would, that would allow us to make sure that everybody was able to enjoy the experience at their own rhythm, at their own pace, through their own screen. That's really cool. So it's kind of like bringing the in-store experience and bridging it with the online experience. Um, and almost, you know, and even like after store hours, people were able to go up to the screen and scan that QR code. It's really cool. Um, and Jason, how did your team, when you guys were working on this, um, the Lego Hidden Side WebAR experience, um, how did you guys determine that this like in-store scavenger hunt style ghost hunt was the right concept to fit the creative brief? Yeah, actually we, um, as a team, we actually had quite a long history with that product. We were the, we were the group that actually did the original prototypes for the product team for, for the play. So, um, we, uh, we were known about that theme for a long time and we're really ex excited for it to, to, to come out. So to be part of the marketing of it too was, you know, uh, was really exciting for us. Um, and I think the, the main challenge that we had was, uh, you know, the, the sets are amazing and stuff, but they're kind of locked in a box. Uh, so uh, when a consumer uh, sees it initially, you know, of course they can see the, the physical toys, but they're going to be very curious about what the AR play is going to be. So we, part of the brief was how do we condense that down to something um, like, like a teaser, uh, that's super fun, but also most importantly, super simple to play because you don't have a lot of time for instructions or, um, you know, uh, learning complex controls and things like that. And luckily I think for us that like the actual core gameplay, um, for, uh, for hidden side is so well designed and so simple that, that it could be easily translated and kind of simplified even more for, for web AR. So. Um, we try to make sure to kind of, as soon as it launched, we're kind of dropping the user right into the, the gameplay uh, and, and get a sampling of that experience. Um, and then, you know, they can, they can leave wanting more. Very cool. And I guess to that point, how was the um, user experience designed with the, like, the store environment in mind? Yeah, so I think the, the, the interesting thing about being part of uh, and connected to both the catalog and then also you know, all the displays in store and on shelves and stuff is that we're almost tasked with only the, the step two of the problem. So like there's all this context provided by the, the, the printed material and the physical sets around you. So if the kids already know what the sets look like, they know generally what the characters are and the themes are. So all we have to do is answer the gameplay question. Um, if this was a, a different type of promotion uh, outside of store, maybe we would have had to, you know, 
uh, launch some of the sets in AR so they could see that first and, and tell a much longer story, which is harder to do and a little bit more complex. Like I think this kind of tandem with the physical displays um, uh, made it a lot more impactful and, and we can make it kind of shorter and sweeter, um, but clearer and simpler as well. Well, cool. so were there these kind of like these visual prompts around the user when they're in the store to kind of like indicate to use the experience? So. Yeah, there was, you know, there's, there's not only the kind of QR code and call, call to action there, like, a, which I think is, we can talk about it later too, is really important, like that final physical call to action. Yeah. But of course, the rest of the signage and the amazing stuff that Martin does in stores with, you know, giant characters and posters and things like that, that, uh, and, and TV commercials and other things that make the, the user aware of the theme, even before they get to our, our AR experience. Very cool. Um, and then, like I guess, outside of um, you know the the physical displays that are in store, uh, what are some other ways that the web AR experience was promoted, um, just to kind of you know uh, raise awareness of the experience to potential users and customers? Uh, that to me. Uh, I guess to both of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I could take it, Jason. Of course, we were, we, were, we were closer to that. So we, of course, you know, promoted through the printed materials, as, 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 as Jason was saying. We, we actually sent a teaser through email with the QR code. We also put that on the catalogs to, to, to start, you know, the, the, the journey, right, and to, 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 to make it interesting. So we promoted uh, in those ways. And, of course, you know, the QR code is something that um, it is easy and, 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 and people are starting to know that there is some experience behind that. Probably the other important part that I, I, I will add it is that, you know, we actually put some thought on how do you close experience? Because one of the things about web AR, it is that, you know, it's a story, right? For us, it was a, f a fantasy story and we were telling something, but you need to have a good ending. And again, we didn't want to just send like, oh, I got the ghost, I'm, I'm so good, right? What happens after? So of course, you know, in the app, we put some uh, trophies and, you know, you, you gamified, you are, you are a gold, you are a fantastic hunter. But also when you are visiting the stores, we also um, reward the participants. So if you were part of the journey, we also um, allow you to, uh, to come to the, to the desk and speak to our, our fantastic store teams. And they were very engaged with all the participants. So you were handed an award, that was, oh, sorry, a diploma that will say you, you are now an official, you know, ghost hunter. You, you actually, in many places, we gave them a small hat, you know, that will say, um, a cardboard hat that will say, you've been, you know, fantastic today, you rewarded. We also developed um, a tour bus. It's actually a school bus, was, uh, was the, because that's part of the story that is trapping at one point. We actually converted in a hidden site. So when you were walking inside the school bus, we somehow had a couple of the QR codes, so there were some ghosts hidden behind the seats and the corner. And it is, again, not really just having an experience that is very important, but how do we create a story behind it and then close it in a very emotional way by, by you getting a memory of that experience and bringing home that unique item that will, will, will remind you how cool you were that day and how many ghosts you, you trapped in the store. Very cool. Um, and Martin, how did customers respond to this experience? Yes, I think it, of course it was it was very very well received. There is, it was very successful. We had a, a, a many people coming to the stores and being engaged, also online and posting, you know, some of the images, and, um, and we're very happy with the results. Of course, it was for us making sure that the story resonated and people were aware of the hidden side story and experience. That worked very well, and and of course we needed to take a couple of additional steps for that to work. I think again. It, it's, as I mentioned, it's a good tool and it, it definitely elevates the marketing campaign. But of course, there's a couple of important steps that I'm very happy to share with everyone here. It is, first of all, we need to, 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 to really you know, boost the communication. We, we put a lot of focus on the communication, as Jason said, the printing materials. How do you tell people that it's time to get the phone out, right? And it's time to scan. That was very important for us. We, we, we of course, you know, really uh, put some time to think about it. And we knew that without good communication about what is the call to action, it will be difficult that people will know, oh, there is a QR code and then I will find a ghost. So storytelling, but also communication, step guiding and promoting this was very important for us. I think without putting the focus, the, um, the, the, the story will not be as good and the success and the smiles and the happy, you know, shoppers that we've seen would be there. So I would say it was very good, but just maybe recommending to everyone that is right now looking to start an experience similar to this is make sure that you, you really think on how do you want to tell people it's time to get the phone out 
and start scanning. If you, you manage to solve that, then the experience is going to be just fantastic and people are going to have a lot of fun going to whatever, through whatever your web AR or AR experience will be. Yeah, just to, just to add to that, I think one of, the, uh, one of the keys to the success of this was the fact that, that working with Martin, it was kind of led from the top. Often in times we, we work with, uh, we might work with a, a digital group or an innovation group with that within the company to create, a, you know, a, 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 an experience, but that is then handed off to a separate team entirely to, to go deploy in retail and, and, and things like that. So there's a, there's, a bis, there's a bit of a disconnect with that kind of handoff. Uh, but the fact that like, you know, Martin was leading this on, on both sides of it made sure that we could actually, all the deployment, you know, through print and through the retail locations and stuff was also properly done. So uh, I think that's super critical. Excellent. And what are some examples of, um, I guess, communicating to the customer that, you know, it's time for them to scan a QR code or um, what was some like, I guess, examples of that messaging to kind of get the users engaged? Yes, th there's a couple of things, you know, again, sharing our personal experience and our learnings, we try to be super cool with the QR code and design something that look completely out of this world, right? I mean, it was like a ghost made with like that. That actually didn't work that well. First of all, you know, some people thought that was an icon or an emoji or a logo and not a QR code. So first of all, make sure that your QR code looks like a QR code. So, you know, there is no doubt about what are you just gonna scan and where you're gonna take the photo. And there is of course a couple of icons that people will recognize, like, you know, the typical one with lines, the circle ones, there's different ways, but make sure that your QR code really looks like a QR code. Then the other one is, you know, um, call out uh, the, 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 the action scan now, take out your phone, just use a couple of words, keeping this very sharp and simple, but really build into that, you know, telling people it's time to get out your phone. And the third one, we have the, the, the privilege and, the, and, and, and that we have a fantastic team in the stores. So all of our uh, store teams were doing an amazing job asking and inviting people, hey, have you scanned the QR code? Have you seen this? And, and that, all those three fronts really help us. So when the store associates say um, uh, to, to, to our, our guests, have you tried it? Then when they saw the signage that say, scan the code, they knew when to take out the phone. And then when those, they saw a QR code that looked like a QR code, then there was no question that they were looking into, in, into the right place. Uh, probably that was the best. When we were doing print and uh, online um, experience, probably we were building on the, on the latter ones. It was good communication and, and, and the QR code looking you know, in a large size. Yeah, a couple of other best practices I, I would say is one is um, because QR codes can can mean different things. They can cause a transaction. They can just link to a site. Like uh, the ability to add some visual call to action as well to preview what they're going to get when they scan the QR code is really good. So they know this QR code is for this, you know. Um, and then the other thing uh, to think about is just like to have ahead of time some understanding of are there gonna be other competing call to actions in that space? So how does your particular call to action fit when if it's multiple QR codes around the same uh, box or you know, is it gonna be alone? Uh, um, where is it gonna be placed? That, that all I think helps uh, in the design as well. Makes a lot of sense. Um, and then, I, and this is open to both of you, um, I guess what are some of the key insights from the experience, uh, some takeaways that you would use uh, to apply to future web AR activations? This is what uh, first. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, uh, of course the, the, the call to action again, the physical call to action. I think the other thing that we are learning a lot in retail, um, again, is like there's this context already uh, presented because of the product being there. Um, so we see a lot of success where there are other parts of the, of the product display going on that are educating the, the consumer about some of the benefits and then AR kind of finishes off that story. So you use AR to, to tell the story, maybe that it's a, uh, maybe it's a technical part of, of the, um, the product that's hard to you know, encapsulate in, in a small printed image um, or something like with Lego, where it's almost like a try-on experience, where you want them to ex experience a little bit of the di digital play that you can't do that with any other type of medium. Um, uh, but design it that way, knowing that the, the, physical, the physical product itself is providing the context. 
and, and, and for us, of course, building on top of what Jason just said, it is also the storytelling, right? It's so, so powerful. It's, it's allowing you to, again, to put imagination, fantasy, play, and, 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 and you know, even to be creative on what you see. So, so we are very pleased with that. It also could be a little bit technical if you want. So uh, we have an experience called a digital box. So this is, these are the screens that you're going to see in, in every Lego store. When you visit one, I'm sure there is one very close to, to you. So when you come to, to the store and you actually put a box, a Lego set in front of the, the screen, it will recognize um, which product you're talking about. So instead of having to shake and imagine how this looks like, the products come to life. So if you want to explain not only the story, but actually how is the content, how does the product look like, how is it made, what is included inside, that helps. But probably if I need to, to prioritize one, it is that it's allowing us to engage with all of our guests um, through the, the, the small screen that most of the people will have in their pocket. So making sure that, you know, if, if you remember actually not far, not long time ago, you needed to queue and move around just to try to see what they were showing. Now, actually, you're able to interact with everyone again at their own pace, at their own rhythm, with the small screen that everybody has with them. So we definitely, like many other retailers, have put in a lot of focus on, on, on mobile devices, not only for transactions and, 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 and information, but also to tell a story and engage with them um, through the products and through the experiences that we're developing. So we definitely foresee us continue to continue the journey. So maybe more surprises will come in the future. And I, and I think uh, Lego makes our, our life a little bit easier because like, like Martin said, one of the, the key things is play. And with some brands, it's hard to incorporate that much play into a web AR experience. But, but we know that, that giving the user some kind of control and, and some sort of active participation in, in the experience just drives engagement up versus them you know, just watching a passive animation or something like that. So, um, I think, uh, yeah, underlining the, the play element, especially with Lego, is, uh, uh, is very helpful. Excellent. And even like, I mean, having a customer interact with an experience is probably more like memorable as well than, um, you know, just watching a video or something like that. So that sounds really interesting. Um, and then also, um, so I guess, that, I mean, that kind of touches on what the advantages of AR are to uh, compared to like traditional media. Um, but I guess what role do you see augmented reality playing in um, today's physical retail climate? Um, and, and Martin, do you want to start? Yes, uh, it, it, it is very important. Of course, you know, there's a couple of things. First of all, I mean, living under, under the current times that we have, you know, with hygiene and social distancing, it is very important that you have the content in front of you, right? So it's your device, you are touching it, you're controlling this, and you have the content next to you. So that, that is, of course, you know, it's something that is, it's really um, fitting very well with the current retail conditions. And then, of course, uh, as, 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 as technology gets better and faster, I'm really hoping and, 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 and think that very soon we're going to have even bigger content, faster connections, and go beyond what we do. I think this is just the beginning of, um, of AR in retail, but definitely I, we, I, I can't imagine that retail will continue to explore that. So at least from the Lego side, as we are also making this part of the product experience, that will that will be combined with um, with um, with with retail. So, without ha not able to say much, stay tuned in 2021. Definitely, there is a few surprises coming. Already, you know, building on the hidden side 2020 experience that is there. But um, I think in general, not only for us, uh, mental reality, it's, it's a technology that is helping us to 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 develop an unexpected and, and very nice experience in a safe and, um, and, 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 and very controlled way. I think uh, one of the powerful things is, you know, obviously consumers now have a lot more choices. Everything is about more convenience for them. You know, it's like next day delivery and uh, all the connectivity and, and things like that. But I think the important role that AR is gonna play is, is about making the right choice for the product that you're about to buy. Um, because I think as you, as you look at all this kind of effort to, to make your shopping experience convenient, the big piece of friction that's, that's gonna start to happen is, is when you make the wrong choice. You know, It's like when you have to do returns, when the, the clothing you buy doesn't fit quite right and things like that. So AR, I think, is gonna uh, enable the, the user to, to, to find the right fit for them and, and the right product. Um, and then that will eliminate the, the, the downside, the remaining downside of uh, of shopping, which is the, the wrong stuff. Maybe just, yes, sorry, uh, Jen, just to add, 
on web AR versus say a traditional AR. I think, you know, when we started the journey, we were developing apps that they were 300, 400 megabytes. And right now, even if you have 5G, right, who wants to wait until that is downloaded for you to join an experience? Of course, not everybody will get that speed at all, all, all the times. So web AR has solved some of the challenges that we saw where many of our guests were not engaging with experience because they needed to download something. They didn't have the data plan to do that. They didn't have the speed. So this is allowing us to interact very well. So this is definitely a great step and evolution of the technology, as Jason says, so we could take immediate decisions if you want to join or not, and you don't need to wait until you go home to download this 500 megabytes file. Awesome. Um, and then and also for both of you, um, how, do you, how do you see the landscape of retail and consumer packaged goods changing over the next three years um, as augmented reality grows in adoption among consumers? Go ahead, Jason. Go. Okay. Let's take one on one. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I mean, AR is going to be ubiquitous on all types of packaging. Like putting on a, a digital layer over product is, is going to be a no brainer. I, I think everyone knows where we're heading to that. I think um, initially, and what we're doing now is we see kind of AR like per individual product uh, over, you know, um, or individual product and sometimes individual brands. Um, but I think what we're going to see in, you know, three years, two to three years is we'll start seeing kind of systems of AR where you have more interconnectivity and, and more kind of benefits shared across uh, product lines uh, or, or related types of products. So it's not just about the one table that I'm buying or something like that. It's about how the table can fit into, you know, the rest of the living room furniture and, and just more context and, and intelligence. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, if we dream into what is going to happen in a few years, I mean, I don't dare to say five because it could be one or two, right? The way this is moving and it's going to be beyond. So you spoke about the convenience. I think we're looking in also into the fun and the engagement. It's going to be probably also information, right? We, we have now um, everyone looking into organic food or, you know, sustainable products. And, you know, you all want to know how all of this was made. So I'm imagining that with the, with the pace that this is moving very soon, you will be able to scan a, a product and know where is this coming from, from which place, when it was made. And maybe I think you could even already do that with some products to technology, but there's going to be a lot of information and, 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 and will help you to make the right choices. I mean, imagine walking in the grocery aisle and then being able to point to, this is a vegan section, this is what you like, these are, you know, the candies for the weekend, or I don't know. So definitely it's going to be a lot of uh, choices, but also information coming. Uh, we only see AR, uh, web AR growing, right, Jason, with, you know, with the glasses and all the things that we hear that are coming soon. Actually, it's only you're going to accelerate the development that we've seen in the last years. Uh, and then one of the things, too, that I think will be quite interesting is the idea of, like, kind of user-created content. You know, right now when you see AR in retail, it's like brand new products. You know, there's a 3D pipeline for us to get that. Uh, 3D object and then present it in, in AR to, to sell that product. But, you know, as Martin says, when people are more sensitive to not creating more waste and things like that, like uh, we should start an, an apps becoming, making it easy to create your own 3D models from, you know, from, you know, taking photos of your furniture in your room or something like that. Like that, that resale market, that eBay side of things, when will they start using AR to, to start selling products too? Or your own creations, right? Okay. Yeah. And then, um, you know, my final question for each of you before we move on to the Q&A would be, um, what piece of practical advice would, uh, Jason, would you offer to any agency looking to get into, um, get started with WebAR and Martin um, to any brand looking to get started with WebAR? Uh, so on the agency side, I think um, uh, we touched on this before. Um, you know, I think as an agency, we are so our immediate concern is like, what is the best idea? And then how do you execute and build something really, really cool? Um, and just to take a step back from that and understand that that's only, you know, half of the, half of the picture. The other half is really deployment and how, how we're communicating that to the consumer, how we get consumers to, to, to click the right thing, not give them too many instructions, not confuse them, all that friction that gets in the way of the actual amazing experience that you've built. That's, that's the bigger risk, I think. There are, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are amazing kind of creative teams and agencies out there and they'll be able to do the, the first part 
do a bang up job in the first part. Um, but the second part is, is going to be the, the, the challenge that they don't expect. Yes, and from, from a brand side, it is, you know, going beyond the technology. I've seen many cases where not only with web AR, you know, with many other things that somehow what, what is developed is just a technology experience, you know, okay, it looks cool, it's nice, it's well done. But how do you link this to your brand? How do you bring your, your brand to life? I think, you know, if technology is so good, then we should spend the time not that much on the technology. We have, you know, you could find always great partners to, to, to take care of that. But it's a spending time on the big idea, a big idea. So how do you will bring the story to life? How do you link this to your brand? What, what, what is the message that you want to communicate in, instead of just, oh, it's cool. It will be, you know, the wow, the, you have to see this reaction. So it's spending the time in that. I think technology is getting stronger and stronger. And again, with a, with a good partner, a good setup, you will be able to deliver that. It's that big message, a big idea that it's what pe is going to excite people um, when they see it. Probably the other part, once you have that, let's not forget communication, 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 right? Is how do you tell people that this exists and it doesn't become, you know, a secret within your activation, at least in the store, there's so many things going on. So make sure that when you are planning to deploy this, you actually tell people it's time to get the phone out. It's okay to take a photo, go out and enjoy this experience because without that, even if you have the best idea, it's going to stay as a, as a secret and I will never be shared or, you know, known across many people. Excellent. All right. So we're going to move into the Q&A. So it's like we have some questions here. Um, all right. And this is for uh, both Jason and Martin. Um, the audience is interested in learning more about measuring ROI with WebAR. Um, can you guys shed a little bit of light on this? Yes, uh, so of course for us, it, it was part of the marketing campaign. So we didn't measure exactly, you know, what was the impact on sales because overall, you know, this is, this is part of the activation. But at least, you know, I could tell you from, uh, from the feedback that we got from, from our stores, from the feedback that we got, you know, from, from, from some of us visiting the shops, it was a successful experience. So we, we rely more on, on, on creating that smile, creating that moment to connect with the brand versus to having a hard link to, you know, to, to, to return of investment and sales. Of course, you know, we would love to do that, but this is the beginning of the journey. So we are more relying on these observations and, and, and making sure that, you know, it creates that, it creates that effect that we want to, instead of having a hard measure of that, it is almost like if you were creating a, a marketing campaign and, you know, you want to go down to the to the the corner of the poster level. I think you know, we 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 are very good at that, and we we want to see what is the return. But sometimes you need to consider that as a package that creates a big effect instead of these the small items. So we are super pleased and definitely look forward to do more of this experience. Yeah, I think uh, I think you know, from from our other client experience, like that that are tracking some specifics. You know, there's. Of course, general kind of activation numbers. I think engagement is, is big. So um, a, a stat that you guys have that, that you all often talk about, which I think is amazing, is that uh, you know 50% or 80% of web AR experiences on eighth wall are over one minute, you know, and 50% are over two minutes. Like those are real long engagement times, especially when you compare it to other sort of digital media. You know, how how long does someone engage with a with a banner? You know, it's like sub a second basically, right? So uh, and then not only that, but with that engagement time, it's going to push to some sort of conversion. So already on e-commerce, we're seeing big conversion numbers, you know, 250 plus percent. If, if something has a, a AR uh, component to it that you can preview and try on versus just, just uh, an image. Um, and then uh, if, it's, if, it's not, if it's not pushing to the actual buy, uh, retention, is, uh, re retention of information is a big Big thing I think in terms of like retail communication as well. So we're seeing numbers uh, close to 70%, uh, you know, in, let's say in the auto industry telling a, a very kind of complex benefit story, you know, maybe safety controls and things like that, that uh, typically when they weren't using XR and they were using print and video, that was kind of a sub 10% uh, retention of that information. But, you know, Jen, like you said before, maybe it's because a lot of it's part of the fact that they can actually play with it and interact with it versus just sit back and passively watch it. 
Next question is, um, how can WebAR be used as a part of the marketing mix of an experience? Uh, probably I, maybe a little bit, I think I already spoke about that, but maybe add a few more points. It, it is definitely a part of the marketing mix. It is, it, as I mentioned, this allow you to, to, to go on the, on the connection and the, the engagement with, with, with your audience in a different way. I, I know, you know, that uh, visuals are very important, you know, to the communication, but this is a step beyond that. And it's allowing you to, to, to again, have movement, have interaction. And with all those images happening in a shopping center, in a shop, the moment you could actually create a good story that will engage with the audience will work. So for us, definitely, it's, 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 it's one of the best storytelling that we have probably next to video. Yeah, and I think the fact that you can kind of build once in a way and then deploy across all these different channels in your, in your marketing, like everywhere from like in retail, in print, and then through all your digit, digital, uh, uh, digital outlets as well. Um, but only, you know, have to build that one experience and then repurpose across and track all of them individually, I think makes web AR really powerful. I, I, and maybe just, just adding to that, just if you trigger a couple of thoughts on me. So this is also allowing us to go beyond the traditional channels, right? So, I mean, not many companies, at least that I'm aware, can have the same experience in a physical store versus online through web AR, we're able to offer, you know, this and be channel agnostic, it doesn't matter where you are. So you could definitely span the reach of your marketing campaign to even the online world of actually, if you started online, you could come to the offline side. Um, next question is, uh, what are some of the physical space considerations you need to think about with the AR experiences um, to avoid crowding in store? Yes, uh, that's a great question. We spend quite some time thinking on, on, on that one because first of all, you need the space to, um, to, um, to, um, to, to have people, you know, really looking at the things and walk around. But the other part is also safety, right? How do you, pro you know, promote an experience that will, will not have any tripping hazards or anything around you? So it is uh, considering the space depends on what you do. I mean, I think you could go all the way from a big car coming in front of you down to, you know, to Lego minifigures in a smaller set. But then think on, you know, the right space for you to interact and have enough you know area to move around we actually with the with the treasure one we're very happy because we we actually invite people to move around and to look into different parts of the store so think on the space as a place where you interact at a moment but actually you could create a, a way to route or, or or to move around the store and and actually come to different locations and then the third one think on what you're doing i mean i i definitely got a little bit worried when I see my, my, my kids walking with the phone like this without, you know, seeing the dog or a pot plant or anything like that. So uh, uh, it is considered those two parts, I think. Yeah, actually with the hidden side, the, the actual story helped a lot. The fact that the ghosts were flying. So a lot of the design for that game was that the ghost, the ghost could be lifted in the air and, and, and kind of above people's heads. Um, there was actually one project that we had, we had started on with, with Martin where we were trying to place a large character. But Martin did such a great job of opening this uh, flagship store that they that the store was packed and had lines to come into the store for like weeks at a time. So there was never enough open space to even plant that character. So I mean that that's a that that stuff to yeah, we, we definitely have to factor. So do we want to like launch in store? Is there stuff like Martin said on the signage outside so you can have some of the play outside. Uh, and I think that the great thing is like with the new other new technology coming in, you can start detecting that as well. You know, uh, are they inside? Are they outside? Or what part of the store using, you know, beacons and sensors and stuff like that and, and give them a, a, a experience that is like physically kind of contextual as well and tailored to that space. Excellent. Um, next question is, how intuitive do you find these experiences and um, how much education do users typically need to engage with the web AR in store? Uh, again, I think you don't have a lot of time. So um, I wouldn't say they, there's, there's some intuitiveness, I think, uh, from the kind of Snapchat generation, you know, like uh, if you're going to do something that's like a, a face lens or or now with the social AR, there there is kind of like simple placement of objects and experiences. So, um, keeping it close to that for a quick mar marketing experience is 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 kind of more desirable, I think. Um, once you 
once you start doing more complex things, I, I think you need to, there needs to be a really good reason for that. You know, the, the user, that benefit has to be over many uses. You know, let's say it's, a, it's a, at a sports stadium or something, or it's for us uh, uh, in sports where we know every single time they watch their favorite team, they can, they, they're going to use this experience. Then you can do things that are a little bit more complex because you're kind of spreading out the learning over multiple uh, uses and also the benefit you know extends much further so they they are willing to kind of go up that learning curve uh, for that long-term benefit yeah for us it is uh, our preferred way will be to communicate through icons so we try to avoid text as much as we can and just have icons as, as jason mentioned that gives a little bit of a teaser on what is the experience i think for this one jason we had ghosts coming out of the qr code in a corner so there was a way to tease that, but we, we tried to avoid uh, writing the instructions and then just communicate with, with, with icons or, 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 or graphics as much as we can. Okay, great. Um, and this is a question for Martin. Uh, what is your vision of future retail spaces and customer interactions and how does AR play into that? Oh, that, that, is, that, that, that is great. Of course, you know, in these times, it's, it is, it is, many things are changing, right? I think retail is being shake, kind of in a way, in, in, you know, to reinvent the experience and all that. I have a feeling that when, when we all go back to, you know, to the new normal and we are allowed to go shopping, it, again, we, we are, we are going to be super excited and we all will go to the stores, probably more looking into experiences, more looking into engagement and entertainment. I think we have learned through this period of time that convenience is there. And if you're looking to get your groceries in one hour to get, you know, a pair of shoes coming to you that fit perfectly, there is traditional ways now becoming a standard on how to do it. If we go back to the physical retail, it is, you know, how do we welcome back shoppers in the most fun and engaging way? So we are definitely excited to, 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 to dial up even more the engagement and the, uh, the storytelling and the experience in, in a physical store, but also bringing that to online because we believe that when all of this be, um, be coming to, to, to the new normal, we all are going to just go out and really try to enjoy and maybe look into a visit to the store even different and into more detail than in the past. I mean, I really wish I could go shopping very soon and then just spend hours trying on, you know, jeans and different things. I'm sure many of you will look forward to that. Awesome. Um, and the next question is, uh, what are you most excited about in AR looking ahead to next year? Jason, yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, so for for us, I, I think um, 5G is a is a is a big um, kind of connectivity improvement for us. So uh, we're looking forward to being able to create much kind of bigger experiences, uh, and not only these, you know, much more, you know, uh, like eye candy, wow, like more utility, uh, but the fact that with 5G we can also have lower latency, so we can tie back into the cloud and tie into AI and machine learning. And, and those experiences become a lot more, uh, you know, kind of intelligent about the space and, and uh, uh, a lot more powerful because of that connection. Yes, and same for us actually now, because the technology is gonna be as good as Jason described it, you know, fingers crossed that it will be everything as fast and uh, you know, as, as good as we are all expecting. We definitely uh, want to dial up into the, into the product experience to so have more mental reality experience in our products. But from a, a retail and a store perspective, we definitely want to do more and we'll continue to, to have more. So next time you're in the Lego store, of course, maybe there will be something happening, but we are really looking forward to, to continue to, to offer something that keeps building as the technology now is allowing us to do faster, larger, and more exciting content. Awesome. All right, and we're, we're almost at time here. So I'm just gonna thank you both Martin and Jason so much for joining us today. Um, and thank you everyone who tuned in today for today's eight talk. Um, and if you, if anybody has any other questions, um, feel free to email us at um, contact at um, and we'd be happy to answer. Uh, but thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank so you everyone. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so all. Much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye.